Go. GitHub is great, isn't it? GitHub is great. Nice user interface. It's a nice website. Super reliable. Uh, there's a lot of great software on there. You can use it for all your source control uh, on the internet. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different from GitHub. <clears throat> so suppose you have some uh, repository on your computer you want to push up to some server. The server, we usually refer to those as remote. And for example, for the repo for our class here, the remote, you see, we're pushing to uh, github.com. But there may come a time where you don't want to push to github.com. You may want to push to your own server. So for that, we're going to use a cool software called GitLab, and we're going to read through the requirements for it, how to set it up. And then by the end of the, you know, in the next few minutes, we're going to have a GitLab server working you know, on our own computer, on our own Linux computer. You may be interested in doing this on a Raspberry Pi, if you have one around the house. So today's lecture, what we're going to do today is going to be a little bit expensive the way we're going to do it. We're just going to do it really quick and, and then turn, turn it on and turn it off just so you have the experience having done it. Um, there are instructions for doing it on a Raspberry Pi, but you'll see that the GitLab server requires around 8 gigabytes of RAM or more. So right now you can get a Raspberry Pi for 75 bucks that has 8 gigs of RAM, which is pretty cool. Or you could also try to run this on one of the cheaper ones that are $35. Uh, I haven't tested it yet, but the instructions are here online for how to do it. But this isn't what we're doing today. Instead, today we're going to look about doing it on uh, DigitalOcean, on a server. So uh, without further ado, then let's get started. <clears throat> so the requirements right off the bat. Uh, let's look at the requirements here. Uh, these are the operating systems they support. Uh, on DigitalOcean, we can use CentOS, Debian, or Ubuntu. Uh, but today we're going to look at Debian, because that's my favorite out of them. Uh, DigitalOcean offers you different operating systems as well, like you can create FreeBSD and uh, Fedora servers, but that's not going to work. GitLab says that's not going to work. Uh, Mac OS, that would be cool if it worked on there, but it doesn't. Anyway, the procedure is super simple. Uh, they give you instructions here online at about.gitlab.com slash install. And they made a little package that makes the thing super streamlined. Um, today we're going to look at Debian. Uh, okay, so the requirements are, I actually closed the tab, but over there there were some requirements. And the requirements are that we need uh, Ubuntu, Debian, and CentOS are good, but we're going to stick with Debian. And you can look through the instructions for CentOS over here. You can look at the CentOS instructions if you're curious. They're a little bit different from Debian and Ubuntu. We're going to stick with Debian because that's that's what we know. Uh, but if you want to play around with that, you'll see the instructions are a little bit different. Anyway, we need eight gigs of RAM, and we need at least two uh, at least a two core CPU for this. So here on DigitalOcean for forty bucks a month, uh, you know if you try and spend less than forty, you don't get eight gigs of RAM. So we're going to have to create a uh, forty dollar a month server. That has 8 gigs of RAM, 4 CPUs, but GitLab needs at least 2 cores. So here we have an excess of that. So this is the minimum one that's going to work for us. So, and don't fear the cost. We're going to just turn the server on and turn it off uh, right away. So the bill will be very small. If you leave this thing online, you know, 40 bucks a month. That's, that's, I think that's too much money for me. Um, but maybe if you're working at a company or something, that's, that won't be too much money. But for us, just playing around here, that's too much. So we're going to add our uh, SSH key as always. We'll call this server GitLab. And uh, and when this thing turns on, then we'll come back here and, and set, the, set the server up. Okay, so our server is ready now. Uh, I just thought, <coughs> I just ran through it before, but I just thought I should show you. You can come through here and, and, and read the requirements here. We just looked at the operating system, but if you scroll down, it tells you about hardware requirements. Uh, here is where it says you need a two core, at least two core CPU, it tells you here, and then in terms of memory, it tells you here, at least eight gigs of RAM, more information there. Anyway, we're, we're ready to go, we can, we can connect to this server. Okay, we're in. And now all we're going to do is we're going to run through these install instructions here. I'm going to pull these over onto another window where you can't see it, I'll just type everything in here. But I'll get you the link here for this, I'm just going to go through and, and type all this stuff. So there in bullet point one, it says we need to update the server. It says to use sudo, but we're logged in as root, so we don't need to use sudo. Also, it says to use apt-get, but I'm just going to use apt. 
you can use either, and you can read about the differences if you're curious. But apt will work for us here too. So we're going to have to update, and then also we're going to have to apt install dash y curl open SSH server and CA certificates. Make sure there's no typos, apt update, apt install dash y curl open SSH server CA certificates. And I'll uh, just hit enter, we'll expect this to take a little while, so I'll just hit enter here. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll meet up in a few more minutes when this thing is done. The next thing it wants us to do is install Postfix. Postfix is a package for sending emails. Uh, I don't think we're going to have time to configure that right now. I just want to install GitLab, but just in case there's some dependency on it, I'm just going to install it. I don't think we need this, but it says to install it, so I'm going to install it anyway. Uh, but this is to configure the server to send emails. Uh, okay, uh, no, no configuration. This is interesting how this popped up. We sort of have this GUI thing in the terminal. Uh, this is done using, probably done using a library package called uh, ncurses. Uh, pretty interesting thing here. Anyway, we don't, we're not going to configure this thing now. We'll just say no configuration and let that keep going. That might take a little while, so uh, we'll take another break here and, and uh, come back when that's done. Oh, no, okay, so that, that's done very fast. Okay, so then the next thing we need to do is we're going to have to get the software we want to use. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line instead of uh, typing this out. Curl is going to download some stuff and then we're going to run it. Okay. We'll expect this is gonna this will almost definitely take a long time and you can read through what's happening here as it as it happens some of this should look familiar to you okay you can install packages now some of this uh, should look uh, familiar maybe not uh, GPG depending on you may have seen GPG but that doesn't matter anyway uh, let's clear this and go on to the next thing now this is important here uh, we have to do what's called we're going to have to set up an external URL. This is going to be the website you go, you type into your browser to accept, to uh, access, to get to your GitLab server. Uh, right now, our server doesn't have a name. It just has an IP address. So all, all servers on the internet have IP addresses, but some of them have names. If you want to spend a few dollars, there are ways that you can buy a name. For example, right now we're on DigitalOcean.com, uh, but DigitalOcean.com is actually just a name for an IP address. And you can read about things like uh, DNS to see how that works. But for, for today, we don't have a name for the server. All we have is an IP address. So here in the, in the uh, instructions, it's referring to an external URL. Our URL is just our IP address. Uh, because, like I said, we don't, we don't have, a, uh, we don't have a, a name for our server yet. We don't have a domain name yet. So anyway, we're just going to say uh, external URL equals... And it, it gives us some choices here. You can read through what it says here in bullet point two. Uh, we can, here, it says we can um, use HTTP or we can use HTTPS. Um, depending, HTTPS sometimes, they say here it should automatically work out with HTTPS. You can experiment with it, but just in the interest of time, uh, I'm just going to go with HTTP because this is just an example. But definitely, if you're going to deploy one of these things in the real world, you're going to want to use um, HTTPS. But we're just going to use HTTP for now just to get it done as fast as possible. And then we're going to put our IP address. The IP address is 134.122.24.11. That's mine. And then after you type the IP address, you have to put apt get install gitlab dash ee so make sure you type this thing right uh, no spaces around the equal sign and wrap this thing in double quotes and make sure you put http colon and then two forward slashes not one and not three but make sure you put two and then put the ip address you'll close the double quote there then a space and then apt get install gitlab dash ee Assuming I didn't put any typo there, external URL. Looks good to me. Oh, oh no, uh, you can either put app-get or app-install. We'll do that. 
Now this I know for a fact is going to take uh, quite a while, maybe, I don't know, five or ten minutes to complete. So I think we'll just let that do what it's doing and then we'll, and then we'll come back here in a few minutes. You're going to see, as this thing's installing, you're going to see a lot of stuff happening that I expect after taking this class that you'll understand by now. You see some things like change mode is happening. Uh, depending on the way that we structured this semester, you may or may not understand why there's four numbers there. You'll definitely understand these three numbers, uh, but this one you may or may not understand. That will be covered at another time. But you see also we're doing a chown, ch group. This is the ch mod. It's creating a directory. It's doing like a mkdir, makedir, uh, creating some sim links that may or may not have been covered at this point in the semester for you. Uh, but uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of interesting things are happening now while it's installing. You know, we're still around six, 60%, so, uh, you know, we'll let that keep going. Okay, so I think at some time uh, in the past I promised you it was going to be easy, and indeed it was. This isn't always the case with open source software. A lot of times you get some junk that you spend two weeks trying to install, but this GitLab thing, it, you know, what do we type in three or four commands in? And it looks like it worked gives us this cool ASCII message. I guess that's a fox. Their, their, their logo, I think, is a fox. And, you know, this is some, uh, what you call, ASCII art. That's, uh... Anyway, it tells us how to check out our server now. It looks like everything... It looks like uh, we made our own uh, Git server. Let's just, uh, let's check it out then. We come to our browser. I know, I'll paste that in a new one. And uh, looks looks good to me. Now we have a website, so you may maybe maybe or you maybe not have uh, put a website on the internet before, but but now you have. We have a, a web server, a web interface uh, for our, for our Git server. Pretty neat. I think that's pretty neat. And uh, now it gives us some instructions here. Uh, provide the password for the initial. We have to create a password now. It's telling us. Create a password and the default username is root. Okay, sure. Uh, what password I'm gonna put? Uh, let me uh, let me write the password down here because I know I'm gonna forget this in about two seconds. All right, so let me type that thing in. Okay, now it says username. Now we can log in. It wants a username, we put root, and it wants a password. We just created that. Okay, and now we're in. Now we're in. Now we're into our into our GitLab server. We're connected, we got a username. Uh, we can use this thing just as if it was GitHub, except this thing is running on a server that we control and not a server that GitLab controls. So there's a lot of benefits to that. There's a lot a lot to be said about that. So you can do everything, you create a project, it looks just like GitHub. You can create a project here, you put a project name, uh, my first bash project, sure. Uh, description, we don't need that, I'll make it public, why not? Uh, this is, it looks just like GitHub. We create the project, and then, you know, the same thing, just like GitHub, it tells us how to configure Git, and it tells us, uh, you know, we can either create a new repository or we can push an existing repository. So let's let's push one that exists. Okay, so we know how to do that. We, come, we don't need this. We're already connected to the server. We don't need this anymore. We're already GitLab is already configured. We don't need to be SSH into the server anymore. We'll just exit out of here. Let me go to. Let me just make a new project. Make a little script. Okay. And now we do all the stuff that we always do. We, we gonna we're gonna type git init. We can type git add um, my what do we call it? Script. We add that. We can commit it. Okay, now we, we, we initialized the repository, we added some stuff to it, we committed to the repository, but now we want to push it up to 
our server here. So we need to add the remote. As of now, we don't have any remotes. We can check get remote dash V. There's none, so there's nowhere to push to yet. So we'll just add the remote. We're gonna add the remote origin. Okay. And uh, and now we just push get push dash U origin master. Uh, we already have credentials. We know the username is root, and we know the password we just created. And I wrote it down because I knew I was gonna forget it. Let me come here and refresh this. And and now you see our, our code's up here on a server that we control. Uh, I think that's something to be really excited about. Uh, pretty 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 fascinating thing we just did. So uh, we're almost done. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of extra work to make this. That was so easy, I thought, let's do a little bit of extra work here. If I'm giving this to you as an exam, I'm going to give you some extra work. So uh, we'll look at that right now. So now let's let's talk about your exam. I just sketched up what I want you to do here. I'll, I'll make it a little more pretty and, and put it in the proper spot for you to see it and make it more readable. But here's what I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is to configure your GitLab server like we've just done. Perfect, you have a GitLab server. It's on the internet, you can connect to it from a browser. That's great. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to add some SSH keys to your account. So we can come back to our server here. And if you come up here, you can go to your settings. And there should be something here for SSH keys. And you can add SSH keys to GitHub. So these, SS, these SSH keys are very important, not just for connecting to servers, but well, you, you'll use them all over the place. One place you'll use them is, is here for your, for your version control, but there'll be other use cases also. So now you, now you have two use cases of them, but there are more. So what I want you to do is to get your SSH key from your computer that you're pushing all your stuff from. Get that key, something like this, and put it here on your server. So I've added mine. I'll give it, that's the name, sure, whatever. And expire, I don't want it to ever expire, uh, so I'll just leave it like that. We'll add the key. So what this means now is now I can push to this server, I can push code here without having to give a username and password because now the server knows who I am because of SSH authentication. So I'll show you what I mean by that is if I come back here and now I want to edit this script. Like this and I can add it like that. I can commit it like this. And now when I push it, it's not going to ask me for a password last time, depending on how it works out. Either usually it'll ask you for your username and password here on the command line, or it may pop up a little GUI window and ask you to put in your username and password there. But this time, when I push, you'll notice that it doesn't ask me for a username or password. And that's because I just added my SSH key here. So now I don't ever need to remember my password or username or anything like that. It makes life a little easier. So that's the first thing I want you to do. And I also want you to add, so that'll be your SSH key, right? So I'm asking you here to add, uh, well, to add your SSH key to your server, but I also want you to add my SSH key to your server. And my SSH key is there in the class repository. Uh, you've seen it a bunch of times, but I'll show you here. I want you to also get this one here, and I want you to add this as well. What this means is that I can also I can also push stuff to your repository from my laptop. So I can come here to SSH keys and add a second key. That'll never expire either. So add add my key. 
and now you see you have two keys on here. That's great. So what that means is that you can push your code to GitHub without a password, and that means that also that I can push code to your repository there without using a password, which is pretty good. And you can do the same exact thing on GitHub, and I encourage you to do the same thing on GitHub. If you go on GitHub, you log in, and you go to your settings, there's a button over here for SSH keys, the same exact thing. You can add your SSH key on GitHub also. That'll make your GitHub workflow a little nicer as well. Now, the next thing I'm going to want you to do after you've done that is I want you to modify that script. You're going to have to create a little repository like we've done here, and I want you to modify the script in your repository 10 times. 10 times because it's a final exam and I'm trying to make this thing take more than 10 minutes of your day. Uh, so I figure I want you to do a little bit of work since it's a final exam, so I'm going to make you do 10 commits. I figure that'll take a little bit of time, and then you can call, we, can, we can call it a respectable exam. You're going to make 10 commits here. I noticed, now, I, I made two commits uh, to this thing. I don't know if I showed it on the video or not, but I just made another commit here to test out the SSH key I added. And, uh, yeah, I showed you that, right? And so now there's uh, there should be, it should say two commits here. It says one commit. So that's what you get sometimes when you work with this open source software, right? Sometimes there's little bugs in it. But when I click and look at the commit history, you see there are actually two commits. When I come, I'm going to want to see ten commits. So after you make your ten commits, what I'm going to do is, well, you're going to need to send me the URL of the repository, something that looks like this. I'm going to need you to send me this. And then with that, I'm going to come onto my laptop. So right now I'm on my desktop, but I have my laptop there next to me. I'll just show you what I'm going to do. You're going to email me that you're going to email me this uh, URL for your for your project that has 10 commits on it. And then I'm going to let me go onto my laptop real quick. Real quick. That's over Is this thing on the internet? No. Sorry for the mistake, but so what I'll do is I will log on to my laptop. So this is my laptop I'm on right now. I'm gonna do this, you know, while I'm eating breakfast or whatever on Friday morning. And I'm going to open up my emails or whoever it is. You're going to have given me this thing here. And I'm going to I'm going to go on my laptop and I'm going to clone it. Giving the getting this uh, link you sent me like this. And the clone worked. The clone worked. Great. And then I'm going to check out the git log. And I'm going to hopefully see 10 commits there. Here there's only two, but you'll have 10. And then I'm also going to try and modify the thing a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure that I can push... If I can push that without having to put in a password, that means that you put my SSH key on your server correctly. If I can't push, that means that you screwed that up. So make sure you get that correct. And if I can push and I can look at the log and there's 10 commits, uh, that means you get 100 on the exam. So, um, so hopefully that's an interesting project and uh, good luck. Let me know if you have any trouble. To wrap this thing up, you're going to want to make sure that you don't incur some big bill, right? Because remember that this server is very nice, very beautiful, but it's also $40 a month. And this is just a toy. So you're going to have to, this is very important. Right now, I think you, you may or may not have some free credits left uh, on your DigitalOcean account, depending on how you created your account. You're going to need to make sure you delete this server. But do not delete this server until after I've graded your exam. So if, if you can get this exam done by Sunday evening, then I'll check everything out and give you a you know, your grade by Sunday evening and then once you get your grade uh, you can go ahead and delete the server because you don't want this thing to be running up a bill so I suppose if you leave the server online for a week that's gonna be about ten dollars it's gonna cost so if you leave it on for one day it'll be you know a dollar and change 
So uh, we'll try and do this as fast as possible so, I, so you don't get a, a big bill. So once you're done, once you get your grade, just make sure you destroy your droplet. Very important, destroy your droplet once you're done. Destroy it. And then, um, now you see it's gone, and now you're not going to be billed anymore. That horrendous amount of $40 a month. And then you can see right now the server's not going to work anymore. Right? If I try and refresh this page, you can see up here it's loading. It, it can't load the page because the server is offline now. So we're gonna we're gonna want to make sure that's very important. This this project's very cool and all, but it's not worth you being billed something ridiculous. So make sure you delete the server after you get your grade, and I'll work with you to make sure we can get your grade in as fast as possible. So so you can uh, yeah, turn the server off as fast as possible. Okay.